Okay, fine. No, yeah, we had to get somebody to open the door. Yes. Oh, we need to remember when we give notices of the club meetings to add the time, but also add on there to let us know ahead of time if they want to join via Zoom. The reason is I didn't want to pack up speakers and microphones and cameras, so I didn't. Because if there's nobody going to be on Zoom, uh, it's setting up all that stuff. Uh -huh. So we don't have to worry about it tonight. We can just tell them, you know, online tonight if there's anybody there to email us ahead of time if they're planning on attending by Zoom, and then we'll set it up. But well, I just realized that if I'm not able to use this to run the presentation as well, then I left my only flash drive at home. So I need to, so I don't suppose either you brought on one so I can I copy. Don't, but can't you log in with Zoom with this and, and use it both ways? I'm logged in with Zoom now, yes. Okay. You should be able to do the presentation on, I wonder if I can, in there. if there is an HDMI cable in there, and if I can figure out how to switch the projector output from the podium yeah. computer to this. Well, because I I don't use the podium computer. I've always used an HDMI cable, and it's usually there's one there. Let's well, hope up, so. Upstairs, there's usually one there, and I just plugged in, and I've always used mine. Let's hope so. You should be good to go. If not, I might have an HDMI cable in my car. Let's get in here, then we can figure it out. I'm surprised uh, your key card, I know, would have got you in the door, but it's really too bad that they don't have rooms with key cards in them, so you could just swipe and get in. I was told that the key the key card readers are really expensive. Oh, that could be. It's a funny thing. We we got one for one of the door one of the doors to the big equipment room in the basement of Hayes, but only one of the doors, the other door all the way down the hall has no access anymore. Oh. So if you want something at that end, you gotta go through all the. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was with uh, Craig, <clears throat> who's that? Saturday afternoon and all Saturday night into Sunday morning, working on Wilton. So I'm hoping I'll, I'm hoping to get another check from Mid American for five hundred dollars on Wilton. Good. And then we still didn't get the thousand dollars from Wilton yet, but no. I, I have to actually tell them that it's done. I haven't done that because it's really not done. Tell them oh, yeah. as soon as it is done, tell I'm, them it's done. I'm, I'm hoping it's done like the first clear night we get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So <laughs> right now those are few and far between. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> They're already predicting Rain possible for storm for Saturday, yes. I know it. We had a fairly decent night Saturday night. A little windy. Oh, oh. Security, here we go. What room are we doing? Oh, oh, 003. Thank you. And when you've done that, there's a, a guy down there who says he's teaching a night class here and his room's locked too. I'm still at the door check. I got it locked. Which that's not gonna. Yeah. Well, is there a? Sometimes there's a door stop in here. There is. Here's the door stop. There, you said there's another room. There's a. A guy just down the hall. He says he's teaching a night class here.
Right. Either fixing something around the house or helping somebody else do something. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, speaking of that, I'm probably going to try to enlist your help. I don't, I wanted to get your opinion. Thanks. Um, my hair is doing that, that goofy noise. I've been driven it. I was going to drive it last winter. And then there's a huge grind noise that sounds in the upper right. Yeah. And I don't know whether like a caliper slipped off the of a noise or if there's, if I frame. I don't know what's going on. So anyway, I, I got scared. I drove it to Devil's Glen Road. I got scared of it. It was so bad. I turned around and drove it home and took my van. So that's been a long time. So I don't know whether I should have somebody take it to your place for you to drive, or if I should go ahead and risk driving it to your place. Oh, yeah. I know, but I hate uh, if you do that, I'll have to buy you a, a liter of pop or something. <laughs> In any more, I might have to buy you a new vehicle. Way uh, back. You know what? I never did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Or I could come over and take the other ring out and you can drive it if it's something that you want to work on, then you can just pay off all of you the rest of your way to your place. Want to do that sometime? Yeah, we can do that sometime. Well, we don't have to do it this month either. Yeah. So we'll okay. do it after well, whenever you're ready. Right. Yeah, I'm, still, I'm still teaching the prize. Yeah. So but I'm in no hurry. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm still doing that. Well, what my thought kind of was is uh, I got a, a an older older van that's dinged up and stuff. It needs a starter motor. Do you do starter motors? No. Oh, we talked about that. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to get oh, that fixed. And I'm going to sell the van. I'm going to take that money and do whatever I need to do to the Xterra. Mm. I'm going to sell the Xterra and take that money and fix the dents to the back end of this vehicle. That would be all these cars. Yeah. I got one that I have that probably hasn't been driven in over a year. Well, I got a DeLorean that hasn't been driven in uh, probably 12 years. Except for my garage, so I've got to have it towed up someplace to have somebody uh, drain all the fluids out and see if we can get it to turn over. It hasn't been started or anything. A DeLorean, you said? Yeah. Back to the future. You know, you can go to uh, O'Reilly's website, and there's a number when you, you look up a, a part part number. Okay. You can enter it in there, and it comes up with a. Uh, uh, I know it's just a bad site. Does it really? Yeah. I wonder if it's one that you can actually put. It doesn't do it, but I wonder if it's actually one you can really put on. Or if they just, it says. It says. It says this this part is not for sale. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but they show it, and it's it's in there. Oh, well, that's too funny. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I can get them for both edges. <laughs> no, because they're actually not listing it for sale. They're just listing it. <laughs> now turn off this one. There it is. And did uh, we didn't really have a real doorstop for this? Didn't see one. Okay, I'll see if I can find a way to allow something okay. a little bit better than that. All right. Hello. I just have to. Uh... Yeah, I, I don't know whether they're going to scan the taxes or how they're doing it. We have it too. So we can say something about that. First time, I mean, like, how about that? Sold, 
Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, guys. Yeah. It was a little chilly out in the obvious area. Yeah, I thought about it. <laughs> it wouldn't have been bad if the wind hit. The wind hit. Yes. I know it. I was out, took the dog out to Westlake. It was okay walking into the wind because I let him pull me. I got the part of the main pool filled up now, don't they? They're all, they're all filling up now. So the one on the west side of the county road there um, yeah. is, is full. I mean, it's really? completely filled. That's the one that normally gets overgrown with vegetation. Small piece. The one then, on the north side, that's there's not uh, too much. Railroad lake. It's, it, it's, it's got water in it now. Really? It's not, you can still see the grass and stuff like that. You know, it's probably. Well, there are the three lakes. You got the one on the west side. That one, hundred percent full. Railroad Lake, which is the one on the north side, or the west, the east side. That's probably you know, maybe fifteen percent. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, uh, Lake of the Hills, which is the big one, yeah. where the pool and that's at. Swimming area. Probably eighty percent. that's about that's you probably about the best we're here. Yeah. Cover. Uh, they keep changing it. How about the student one? For a lab one. For a faculty one. I know my faculty one. Why do you mind typing it in here, or would you rather not? You'd rather not. Have it. Yeah, I want to get in there to get the emails. I can. You know what? I'll just uh, just your top down yeah. here. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll just do it on the phone. Okay. Two finders. Well, Byron's coming. He's got uh, his neighbor doing music finding. Oh, let's see what he's posting. Cool. I don't mind. As soon as I this was wait a minute. This is a wonder. On my CPC. I never even saw uh, it. Okay. Uh, let me see. I got that Orion. I did the same thing. I got 90 and never installed it. I didn't even bother putting it on. Coming off it. Ah. That's the new baby. That's the new baby. I I had it off for 10 minutes. Yeah, but. It also has for nighttime. Do not share this. Oh, well, it's a guest guest Wi-Fi. I mean, are you supposed to be much? Yeah. Double duty. Yeah. 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 Now that door is locked so that security doesn't have to come back after the meetings. And that's so don't let that don't let the door close. You can't open it from the inside? You can open it from the inside, you okay. can't knock on the outside. Yeah. It started asking me for the password, it just says it can't connect. What's going on, Cecil? Usually a cat pops up, you know, the little white thing that's set. So how did you get into the outside door? Yeah, but you can see it. Yeah, the outside will open, but the inside First one is easy. Yeah, man. That's what we thought. Hey, this one. Uh, okay, we're good. Yeah, no. I don't know. Just a couple pointers. So did you ever get the mirror back for that? Yeah. Did it? I got the mirror back. No idea. I haven't put it in yet. Mm. And the only the only bad thing yeah. is hey. you get in, it, uh, they're not they're not overcoat. 
Hmm? Um, Can you get into, are you connected by the internet? Yes, through my, through the faculty Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Secondary. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, um, I have it. So that's kind of neat, but it's, it's awkward. It's really awkward to use that. For the soul search, you can stand back here and look at the dot. This thing, you can't remember it. Look, we're looking at the bar. Just coming up above the horizon now. So, do they have that in stock? Or did that wait for it? Oh, they made it for you. Oh, yeah. It was in a stock item. You just have to wait for it. It took two weeks. It was a long if ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do we have here? There's also a deep space tool. Oh, okay. The whole focuser and headline comes off. Huh. And I paid a little bit extra for the feather touch focusers. Yeah. yeah. So, and I really like the feather touch focusers. Yeah. Yeah. On, they seem to see. I'm sure it was more than a little bit. I like it. What's that? I'm sure it was more than a little bit. Yeah, 400 more. I mean, it's 90 or 100. 100. 107. Okay. Yeah, it was right at six grand. Um, 5, <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to. Uh, Start spending what I could get to spend before retirement. So I've got five days of work time. Really? I work Tuesday, Wednesday this week, Thursday, Friday next week. The final work day I work is Monday. Then I've only been working two days a week for three months. Yeah. I had all PTO to burn. They still were going to owe me 14 hours. Okay, so I clicked on the student one. And it gave me the, the student uh, login stuff back in the I'm going to try again to see if. Uh, okay, I was hoping that it would pop up a guest SAU or SAU guest, and it still did. Question. Is that a question? Okay, Let's see if I got it. Okay. I'm just seeing guest. I've got the zoo. I've got the Zoom link active. Yeah. And then uh, during your presentation, I just go to your screen. Maybe they don't do the guest anymore. It should be the meeting. It may not be lead. It may just be um, carbon from the. So what? Send out the notice.
same thing as me. And it's just a liquid that you brush on. And yeah. It the and it, 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 you can actually use it for root too. Um, it's so it works both ways. It's been cleaner. And actually root. Some kind of seal deepen. You know what we could do also? So if we get people that want it to like zero, we can bring a little projector and have like another laptop set on Zoom and shoot that screen right against the whiteboard and everybody's picture can be there. And then I've got an omnidirectional microphone that you can set right here. So with people we can talk. And I, we could, I've got a little speaker that's loud. It works good, it's little. Um, we can set the speaker yeah, on the table yeah. there or on the garbage can so that if they talk, we can hear them. And if we set the speaker by wherever we're shooting the image, at least it makes it feel right, you know. Make no. notes of all these. Oh, I already know that. The main thing is I don't want to break everything and set it all up and nobody comes on Zoom or one person comes on Zoom because I got to tear my stuff apart at home. Card it all in, set it all up, and put it all back together. So, I guess. I don't know. So, yeah. We use respond to yeah. invitation. Yeah. Um, by, yeah. should we say, by some, by well, some time? Well, the coin club does it different. For you, I yeah. think that sending, sending out the I've reminder got, yesterday or I've today is perfect. Well, actually, so if they respond one, yesterday, that's, that gives me enough time to send the email one, one, to do it. So I, I could have packed it up today. Yeah, you say mark one. So I don't need a ton of time. When I, got I just it, don't want to do it if I don't have to. I'm not you sure know. exactly. It's kind of like driving all the way out for a public opening that it shows up and it's raining. It's like yeah, yeah. Same so, same so it's exactly that. Why call you? And I gave her any of the serial numbers. She goes, that was a, what they call a Ruger standard. And she says, that was built before the Mark 1s. So it's the same exact thing as the Mark 1. But it was before we started thinking of the Mark 1. Is that mine? Huh? Is that mine? Yours. My glass? No, Mark One, a Ruger Mark One. What do they call my one? Because it's that first version of it. Isn't that called a Mark One too, or is that something different? That's why I thought if you were talking about it. Okay, go ahead and give it to me. Uh, five, six, four, nine, nine. I'll just select the back. I'll just click that. Yeah, that's all right. I, I can add it all into my contacts. Um, um, okay. And the phone number? Five, six, three, four, nine, nine. Three, four, nine, nine. Three, four, nine, nine. Four, seven, 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 you Somebody's here. Byron, how are you? Yours? All right. Here, let me uh, kind of a. All right. How's that? Good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a good Excuse idea. me a second. Especially if they're counting how many. Yeah, there are. what so, I yeah. you have, you can check. Right, so I'll just take a picture of, you know, okay. and send you a picture. Okay. It wouldn't be like one of the same. Okay. It's, uh, well, it's our first time doing this. We're ironing out details about how we're going to, how we're going to make it work. Understood. You know, it's really weird. Are you using the HDMI on your laptop, Robert? Yes. Well, I would think that if you turn up the volume on this guy, the volume ought to play through there loud, but video DVD. Oh, I forgot about that. Um, what's the one on your right hand look like? Looks like the one in the left hand. <laughs> Because the other one's a celestron bracket, it won't work. Now, this has got that one might work. Uh, 
Well, it's kind of a universal. It's still a Celestron, but it's a universal mount. Yeah, the only thing is I need to have something where he can interchange his um, guide scope when he gets one. Ah. I, I, I would prefer not to drill any more holes in that tube. Yeah. Well, we can try them and see if they'll fit. See what happens. Well, I, it has to be a bracket for it. Well, you know, this one, yeah. This one has the bracket, but it's a Celestron bracket. But it would still require holes. It's all the way up. Huh. Audio. Does yeah cool. see that would still require Some, holes? Yeah, speakers in that guy. It would be a different mount base than the guide scope. Another class. Yeah. Okay. So he must be able to use. Try to use the sound system. Oh, do you think maybe the sound is off on your? Uh... So yeah, we need something that's got the trying the more universal fit. You know, you see, it's got the like the dovetail with the notch. That volume is all yeah. the way up. That one's all the way up. There, there it's, it should be up. Yes. Everything is on. So, and that scares me. It's a hundred percent. I've never run anything more than seventy-five percent, but that's where all the distortion begins. But how about in your laptop? Well, your laptop is already. I wonder I if your laptop can. Let me see if uh, you can send it to the HDMI. That's it. That's the piece. But will, will that one of those scopes fit in that? I don't know. This is the Orion mount. But he sold the Orion finder without. OK. The I wonder if that's a, that's probably a, 50, a 50 millimeter bracket. Yeah. So those 50 those 50 millimeters, those two, those are 50 millimeters uh, scopes that you had. Yep. Those should fit in there. Okay. Well, we can try and see what happens. How much do you want for hmm. the bracket and the scopes? Yeah, she seemed okay yesterday. What is this for your neighbor? Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll make him a deal. Who's playing with the computer? <laughs> Jeff. Oh, there you are. You're back. Okay. All well, right. Um, okay. I'll have to get with you and get those. And uh, we'll just have to take one of those, maybe that universal one. Don't mess with the Celestron there. Yeah. Because somebody from Celestron will buy it for Celestron. Yeah. The okay. universal, and we'll stick it in there. It should work. Yeah. Yep. We'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, no. So we'll just have to do that. But anyway, I would plug a speaker into my headphone jack. And... Mm -hmm. Hey, Rusty. Yeah. That universal one, does it have a O-ring or a... There's an O-ring in here. Okay. There's, does a, that... there's, a, there's a thing for an O-ring on this one. Okay. It'll work. That'll work. So, yep, there's a combo right there. Okay. Okay, we're right there. Okay.
everyone hear us all right? Yes. I can't stop right here. Okay. Somebody forgot to turn the clock ahead. Oh, well. Are those computerized or run by a central location? Some of them are. This one should be. It says radio control. On the other hand, I was teaching a class one day and the clock suddenly started going wild. Yeah, wrong radio station. <laughs> Should have had it on the classical station and they had it on uh, maybe some alternative, alternative rock. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not pushed all the way in. Well, I had them on there for 50 bucks. I'll sell it to him for 35. 35, okay, I'll let him know. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So what's, what's the plan next? Thank you. Yep. Ah, uh, well, let's see. Pardon me. Do we have people online? Yes, we do. Unfortunately, you can't see them while I'm uh, editing this. And uh, sorry, what's your name again? Ron Mullen. Ron Mullen. All right. I guess everything back there. Somebody did because they didn't close the roof on the roll off. I wouldn't. It was all the way open? I don't know how. No, it was like cracked open. Oh, it wasn't close to me. To me, he made it sound like it was left open. That's about the only thing. But who would go to use the 20 inch and not send out an email to let everybody know that they're going? Yeah, I think it's rude that people do that. Yeah, but. That's we don't know who it is. So Dave is emails. If they get locked, we've got the little lock. Yeah. The little yeah. book that I just like it. I thought that was removed. Then Mike, Mike, we're probably supposed to know that Mike, you there? Didn't you say the bolt inside the old roll-off roof building was removed? Yeah, anyway, I just wonder. Mike, and Mike isn't answering. Did I stabilize that anymore? Yeah, I haven't looked at it yet. Because I, the, what we did is the crisscross. The crisscross is on the other side. Yeah, well, one straight is online. I see, I see it. Yes. Yeah. That's all I needed. I mean, it, it, I would be able to try pushing it. Pushing it. We're not muted. You, you can still hear us, right? Oh, yeah. 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 That, that pin lock. 
It, it's it's just, uh, it was just a cheap little pin oh, lock. Yeah. And, a chain uh, pin lock, yes. Yeah, it just slides. And, uh, you know, that that was the lock, but it's pretty weak. I mean, it should be something oh. better. And I think it's broken. I, the last I looked, I think it's broken. Yeah. That little mm. slide pin lock. I seen her remember it was jammed shortly before that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the pin lock and the roll off doesn't doesn't seem to work on my head. Oh, doesn't it? Well, we need to get that to work because if someone did yeah, try to lock it and the wind did blow it, that's not great. I, I, I doubt it would have to be like tornado speed. Yeah, that's that's why right. I want to put the like well, well, locks on there. So if you want to last wind, we have a lot of no like 65 mile an hour. Like if you want to go in there, you, you call it. Right. I'm over the roll I'm in. It was like, it was yeah. it was turning well, cameras. Well, 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 then we know that somebody's in there. Somebody's available. Someone should be available. It's all on the I do all my doors from home. And if you know if there's four or five board members that all have it, so anybody that's got I guess our boss is getting electronic. I got electronic cycle lights on. Yeah, they're not Wi-Fi, but. I thought it was all just ground. Well, the kids can use a key and stuff like that. So, yeah. You know, well, I want to change it. I think they go yeah. here. My front doors and my service doors all have electronic, and you can use your key or you can well, use a passcode or my decision calls me and I let her in. Despite what the box says. Yes. Okay. Uh, I know a lot of trouble to get back in person. Let's do this. <laughs> I went to a lot of trouble. What meeting Just is this? One. Maybe we, maybe we should ask the campus administration. It's, don't they? Different departments don't seem to be talking to each other. Like they're married. Like they ever did. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, how do you like the new digs? I'm not sure this room is bigger than the one we used to have. It's a lot like the old bridge. <laughs> it is a little bit bigger, but that's pretty good. It's two rows bigger. Or eight, yeah. Yeah, that, that room was only like for 24 to 30 people. This has got to be at least 40. Like we'll have 40. So we, 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 keep, do, we keep doing these in person. Maybe we will. We will. All right. That's 42 people plus an instructor. Yes. So everybody needs to bring a guest next time. I would also say that I mean, mass mandates are done now, but I'd still recommend at least bring one just in case. Well, who knows? We might have attendees or high risk. They're sneezing. Exactly, yes. And besides, these rooms are also used by all those journey students. Sure. Yeah, yes. COVID is probably the least problematic thing to catch there, right? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> That's all the other I don't think I'm going to the other one. <laughs> That's not what Bobby told me. <laughs> That's what my experience tells me. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see. All right, uh, look in here. All right. First of all, do I have the name of everyone who is attending right now? Is there anyone I've missed? You shouldn't have to worry about it. It's my job to take notes. So you just relax. Yeah, you're right. you're right. All right. Well, I'll still need to at least consult these from time to time. So, Um, yes, I haven't mentioned this a while. I do post recordings of these meetings on the Ambrose Astro YouTube channel. Uh, does anyone ever, does anyone have a chance to take a look at those? Never been there. Well, if you ever, ever do, bring another, another version of our minutes. Drag him in here. Yeah. <laughs> Too well. Yeah, how do you get? It? It'll be a student. 
All right. Uh, so first of all, our past events, um, our Messier Marathon on April 2nd. Gee, guess what? It was canceled due to weather. You should wait till like the last 15 minutes to schedule these things. Otherwise, you're doing the weather system for more than <laughs> So I did want to ask about that. Is it worth that one? So the Messier no. Marathon this year got really close to being held. Yeah. If we had clear skies, we still couldn't go out there because the ground was too mushy. Uh, so can anybody think of an alternate site like Blackhawk Junior High where we could go set up on pavement or blacktop if you want and still do a marathon if that's, I mean, Mankey's always going to be better because of the skies, but if it was clear out and it was too mushy, I would have went out someplace that was concrete. So I don't know if anybody knows of a place where you know, we can kind of go spur the moment and set up. I think we can up in Riverdale, but Riverdale's above Elko or whatever, Archonic. So it's not great for a Messier marathon. But pretty much anything in town is going to be off of the Messier marathon. Yeah. What about the junior high? Oh, the junior high where that event is held in August? Yeah, for the. Your shower party. Yeah. I thought about I could I don't mind asking them if they mind if we show up there without notice for that. They might be okay if we just set up and start so the might, you might have lights. Yeah, or, I bet the lights are but they, they can log in and turn those off. They did that our last uh, thing. Or we could actually say that day, we could call that day at the school and say, hey, you know, we're rained out over here, uh, the ground's too soft. Can you shut off your lights for us? We'll talk to your place. The marathon's on Saturday. Will somebody be at, anybody be at the school to log on and turn them off? There's usually cleaning staff. I don't know. I, I just, I just they, don't they know where they go. So, because it was really close to being held last year, or this year. Because the skies were supposed to be okay. They ended up not being. But we can check on that. Pleasant Valley High School is not very good for it. I tried it there before. And for that matter, out at the Indian Municipal on all the scopes to be parking lot out at the Boxer River. Probably use it for a lot of trees, though. Where? Yeah, up on the parking lot. Yeah, but our parking lot is all grass. Probably wouldn't have just as mushy as the server. Well, well, I mean, the the parking parking grass. I think he's talking about the parking lot up by the museum. As he has even more trees there, and I'm not yeah. while I was thinking. And I didn't think of the trees. Well, anyway, if you think of a place, you can email it to us. I don't mind making contact with people, like you know, if there's some factory or something that you kind of know of that might be decent. I thought about even maybe like Farming Fleet's parking lot, but they've got little lights in theirs. But there's a couple factories a little bit farther down, maybe. But I don't know. Or what was it, Mike? Mike Danfield, did you have the idea of maybe splitting the marathon up into two smaller ones? Uh, no, somebody else, somebody else suggested that. Uh, who, who, who was that? Sure. Well, I know that that Pat does that, and yeah. the Economic League does it, but There's I don't see like one. It. But we, we've done. To, to me, it's a different thing. To me, a marathon is how much can you get done, and doing it the way Pat is, that's maybe doing it the right way, and that you can take your time, look. And draw the picture and do what you need to get the certificate. But I think I, if you can get them all in one night, you get a certificate. Yeah, you yes. can, but you have to actually follow their guidelines. I think you can't use like computer assist. Oh, that changed a lot. I think you have to observe it and you have to actually draw it or something. They, there was there, maybe they've changed it, but it yeah. used to be because the way I do it wouldn't qualify. I mean, uh, when Matt and I went out, I used my hand controller. We got 107 of them in one night. So we can do the thing, but since we don't belong to the Astronomical League, you can go out anytime you want and look at SEA objects all year round. So, you know. Well, then, uh, then the, our club had a uh, public night on April 9th. That did go as planned, or at least I went out there. Um, two of us joined online briefly with like Steve Van Hefty and Mike. 
And then we had two in-person uh, guests. Um, one of them, uh, Rusty Ebert, he, he and his wife were camping out at the Watts River Center that night for their anniversary. And he decided to come over and see what was going on. And the other one was, was named Jim McCade. He used to teach finance at, here in St. Ambrose years ago. And so we ended up spending quite a few hours uh, working with the telescope. Stayed till, both stayed, both stayed till a little after 10 o'clock. Skies cooperated very nicely. Reminds me, Jeff, we need to get a wired hand controller for the telescope. So if, you, if you could send me an email about the make and model of yours, I we tried to can't get it, but um, I'm going to donate mine. Which one? It's like PlayStation 2 with the USB cable. Is that the only one that works? You can't. Uh, I've tried using the wireless one out there, just keep having problems with it. I mean, is that connected to your computer? Yeah. It's, it's hard, hard line connection. No. Hard line connection to the computer. Solarium is pretty finicky on the hand controllers that it allows you to use. There are others, but they're all older ones because Solarium was designed back. Now everybody's using. Wi Fi stuff on their phone to connect it. But yeah, I don't use mine anymore, so. It was. We, we got a, a wireless one for it about three years ago, and uh, we never could get it work to work. I remember that. And then, um, so when I, I've been to all of the events except for this last one, I was in Portland. So I always brought mine, so we always just used it. So. Then I got the 10 micron mount, so I don't even use storage that way. So we just want to make sure that we don't break it. Because I can't find the old PlayStation 2 hand controller anymore. PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2. Not, two. not an Xbox. No, and not a PlayStation 1. And not a, uh, is there a 3? The yeah. new PlayStation 5. Five, 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 five. Then yeah. the other ones work on it because I had a 1. I got a three from Walmart a couple of years ago, back when that wireless had worked, and tried hooking about Try new game. Was that? Try new game. Yeah. I'm surprised that they, 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 they haven't done anything about it. Because uh, I thought I thought all the wireless, all the wireless uh, controllers, you can still use wire. They have most of them as a USB port, so you can use them. Number one to charge, and number two to connect. If you don't, if you don't want to use them wireless. <coughs> well, no pressure. All right, so coming up. All right, so. St. Ambrose has its first public night coming up this Saturday. Keep the weather out of this for now. And I said keep it out of it. <laughs> and then May 7th is our Astronomy Day. Both of us hosting that. Should we go back to the St. Ambrose night this weekend? Yeah. For some Z reason, a miracle happens, and it's dry enough to go out there to clear the skies. Anybody in Zoom or on Zoom, can you guys go? I'd like to write down who's going to be in attendance. Can Zoom people hear me? Can I, can I on Zoom, Zoom here? Kind of hard to hear. Um, yeah, no. The microphone doesn't pick up. Yeah. No. Uh, so if Jeff is asking if any. I'll be there. You're 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 going to go out Saturday night if weather permits. And if the ground yes. is the ground going to be soft or is it going to be firm enough to drive on? Um, That's the question. So how do we know that? When will we know that? I'll email Dave Mercy a couple of days ahead of time and ask him about the ground conditions. It's supposed to rain on Thursday. 
Well, not Thursday. Friday. So that was Wednesday. 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 That Friday, Friday, Friday. Friday. I think, <laughs> and, and that's yes. the other thing. I mean, even if the weather is good, and we can park on the parking lots outside, you still, it's terrible to be carrying all your equipment on, uh, you know, from the parking lot to where you're going to set up. Well, I, you're right, and I wouldn't do it if it was me, unless you had a little. I wouldn't. But what I would say is, we've got the 14 inch in the dome. We've got the 20 inch people can man. And when we get the 12 inch in our dome, we would have three scopes there already. So for a public night, you wouldn't even need to bring anything other than your body and moral support. So, and okay. some some folks have got to grab and go. I mean, I've got a uh, astro scan that I bring and set on a little table outside. People can pick up and look through. So. Again, since it's a public night, um, one of the good things would be is if you could bring your own gear, then you could stay late and do your own thing. But, you know. is, then, there, is there anything in the 12-foot dome here? Not I yet. So. You know, that's so the other thing. thing. We can set up a scope in the dome in the meantime. Do you have that 11-inch that we have? Is that working? Yep. I have a pier for it. Oh. For a, a Celestra or a community. Uh, it's on legs, but you could bolt it down. Can we use the legs on it? Yeah, maybe we can borrow that, put the 11 on it, and then we'd have an 11 inch in the, the, the little dome. Yeah, it's, it's a little wobbly on the legs, but if, if you want something, if you decide to go permanent, the legs will come off, they're just sticking out. And it'll bolt you know, onto the pier or onto the pier or whatever. It's, can, it's, you, right, it's all set up for to put a wedge, a slash on or can, can you lock that dome? Okay. Can we lock the new dome? Yeah. It came with my 11 inch. It yeah, must be so because I couldn't get on. into it last I couldn't get into it last Saturday. Did, I, did anybody get the email I sent on asking for the combination to the new dome? Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Who put the lock? Is it the same as is it the same lock as before? That the combination the combination didn't the one that's on the roll off route, the com that combination didn't work. No, it won't. No, the, the, the if that's the same one that was on the dome before. Yeah, I've got it here. Yeah, you only have to worry about about it. You can walk right in it because the door latch after moving it doesn't line up. So you can just. You mean it wasn't even locked? Right. The the, um, the new dome building. There's nothing in it anyway, but we couldn't lock it. If it's, if it's the same one that we had in the dome before, it's four six three. Four six three. Yeah. That sounds right. That, that, that it doesn't line up, so it doesn't. So lock. Lock. It wasn't even locked. Well, the reason why I'm asking is, I, I, I mean, I, I got a pretty stable tripod at home that we could, I could leave there. Is it an AQ by any chance? Yeah. Well, we've you can do whatever. A, we've got a dovetail now on the 11 inch for an EQ mount. You would have to leave by, I'm going to the tripod, and we would need, and we would need a. The pier that I have is just flat on top with a single bolt okay. about the wedge. Would be so we have to put that back on, which I don't think mm. is a big deal. But... Could actually go there like on the daytime sometime. Then I'll bring some of the stuff and we can set it up and see how it works. Yeah, is the other side? Do you have another equatorial you know, mountain drive? Go on top and just you know, drill holes for it. What happened to the beer that was in? We've got it. I'm not, I don't know whether that's in a plastic case inside one of the buildings of me. But yeah, we deforked it and bought a dovetail for it. And we've been using it. Matt, I know, used it on his uh, Atlas mount. And uh, I think Ken used it on his, with his uh, maybe his astrophysics mount. A number of people have used it. The 11 inch is a, it's an SCP. It's a 10 inch SCP, yeah, a mead. Yeah. And that would be, that would work fine in there. Like you said, we could be perfect. Yeah, it's a good beginner scope. It's got 
plenty of power to, to yeah. actually like, uh, convert it. How high does it have to be off the ground in order to secure the dome? I the have walls. to look. Well, the walls, I mean, it's going to have to be about seven feet. The walls are seven feet tall. I mean, you'll lose, not going to be able to get to the horizon on you unless you actually raise the floor in the dome so you can get up. So, what the goal is, since St. Ambrose is letting us put the 20 inch of their roll off, we were going to put his 12 inch in our dome with their amount, and Mike was going to clean it all up and paint it. That might work. I, yeah. But we had a 16 in there. Yeah, well, that's 16 F by five. Yeah, I don't know what the 12 inch is in SF. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's a long college long run. Okay. Well, let's take table this until we get to the observatory upgrade agenda. So if it's good weather, um, Rolando and I, You'd be there. Yes. Anybody else in this room? See some the boss media. See some the press. I don't know. 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 Okay. Now, astronomy day on May 7th. Any fresh news about that? We still go for Bettendorf High School. Yeah. So, Astronomy Day, what day was that in May 7th? May 7th. So we are kind of getting the shaft from them a little bit in that um, the first time we had Astronomy Day there, we had the whole inside of the building and we set up telescopes and we had display tables in there. Yeah, like three or four years yeah. ago. And we set up scopes outside. Yeah. Then the next year it kind of rained. So we set up, didn't set up scopes outside, we set underneath the uh, the building and just in case it's clear enough to do something, we still had some displays. Well, then they started getting dance competitions in there. And now if we can't sit up outside on the grass, they want us to clear down at this other entrance where nobody even knows there's an entrance there. So my thought is if it's bad weather, it's canceled at Bedford High School. So are we not doing anything with Putnam anymore? No. Um, and PAC isn't doing a lot with them either because now they've got their own uh, what did they call that dome inside? They've been doing their own thing, really. Inflatable, an inflatable dome. They've been doing a lot of their own stuff. Yeah, but we could do something with them. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. had that before. Well, they got something back as tentatively, they got something that they're working on, I guess. But anyway, we, we haven't got a date yet. I guess the thought would be is if it's bad weather during the day, not. Don't go to Bentonorf at all, Bentonorf High School. If we wanted to do something, go someplace else. Like you said, maybe the Putnam inside would let us set up a display or something. Or I have, yeah. I have a suggestion that uh, we try the Davenport Library. Oh, Good. Yeah, my, sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that uh, a good choice. We've. I don't think we've ever tried is to go out to uh, the Davenport Public Library branch out there on Eastern Avenue north of 53rd. Although I think that Eastern Avenue and 53rd intersection is tore up right now. I don't know yes, if you can through there. Well, Eastern and 53rd are messed. You have a West Branch also on Fairmont. What was that about the West Branch? On Fairmont, you have a West Branch library there as well. And we, we'd have to set up inside. They'd have space inside. We've got a couple of meeting rooms in there. Well, how about here? Would we do Rogalski? We did that for the Venus. Uh, was that the Venus Transit or the Mercury Transit? The Venus Transit. We did. Um, it was available. <laughs> Sophia Pierce is the uh, person at Rogalski who's in charge of uh, scheduling spaces there, scheduling events. We'd have to get in touch with her. See if see if see if the day's free. It might be hard because that's gonna be a long day. We could turn it into a two-hour thing, three-hour thing. I mean an inside type of thing. 
but good weather, we're at Bent Dorp High School yet, we'll set up on the grass, we're good to go. Then that night we're over at Mankey. If it's bad weather, Mankey is out, of course. And if we want to do something in town, you know. We have to be getting word out now. Send me an email reminder this week. I can contact Sophie and see if see if anything's available. Con but contact Davenport uh, Library System. See if find out also if uh, either branch would be uh, amenable to this. What about the It's like on the very edge of town. So. Well, I it's wonder. It's all right now. Yeah, but <laughs> since we used to have our meetings at Bettendorf, we could try Bettendorf too. They've got that little museum. I've never been in there. Maybe they got room there, or right in the lobby of the. Uh, you know, we could put a couple of tables. Well, they've side. always been kind of hard to work with. So. They have been. I'm not even sure we want to mess with. Okay. Okay, we've got a few options to explore, so let's let's explore them. I think the St. Ambrose would be great. You'd have all the students there. They wouldn't have to uh, uh, go all the way out to north of Walcott. I, I think uh, it's in the city. I, I think that uh, St. Ambrose, man, that would be a perfect place. St. Ambrose. Oh. Just my idea. Got all the students there. You're you're in a good residential area. Lots of people could come if it's advertised. Uh, I think that that would be an ideal situation. You could set up on the grounds there somewhere. I would think, unless they're having uh, ath outdoor athletics. Is there an athletic field there? I think there is. Yeah, if it's outside, I like keeping it Bettendorf so that we've got we're working with school systems. So the the uh, Meteor shower is at Pleasant Valley High School. The astronomy day is over at Bent North. I wanted to figure out another kind of event to have it like at Davenport North so that we get all the schools involved, you know, with, with our activities. So St. Ambrose already has us for this and their events, so we're, they're aware of us. So they're aware of us, but are the students aware of us yeah. outside of my astronomy class? Be, it will be if they see a bunch of telescopes in the parking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, speaking of Pleasant Valley, uh, then there's the meteor shower party on uh, what day is that? July 30th. Uh, in it's supposed to be the Perseus, yes, the moon is shoving us out of the way, unfortunately. That, that, that's the best moon at the best of time. So it's, you know, the moon kills it all. So fortunately, we bring enough telescopes where they can look at other stuff. And Saturn and Mars, I believe, is always right. Or Jupiter and Saturn. I don't know. Two um, of the planets are always right there. Venus, if you look early, they get really good views of those. So, At least some of them should be in the evening sky by then. Yeah. So we, we could actually start that early if we want because we've got a lot of solar scopes in the club now. Rusty's got one. I've got one. Rolando's got one. There's at least three H alphas. And then it'd be good to have like three or four white lights. So we could start, you know hour before sunset, people can check out the sun and then, you know. I've got a white light in my office. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, that still looks like it's a Pleasant Valley Junior High. And uh, we might have to relocate that too, because I think Ian said he wasn't going to be available, but I don't know whether that means he doesn't want us to do it or if he, that just means he won't be there. And then there's Eastern Iowa Star Party. That's our last big one of the year. That's September 23rd to 25th. 
25th, yes. Uh, in the past, we would have had to start major planning for it by now, especially when we're gonna have guest speakers. I'm um, thinking we're not gonna bring any bring in any guest speakers again this year. That's what we're saying. But we thought we had let we had it last year, and I didn't have about a dozen people, and the weather was iffy anyway. I think we had one good night. Yeah. One but, but we did, next night was really good. Yeah, it was something like that. But it, so uh, it was nice, just a small star party. We didn't have uh, prizes or, or guest speakers or anything. This year, I thought we'd do the same thing and then talk to people. And then next year, start building it up again, getting guest speakers in. The, the key thing is um, taking advantage of people doing Zoom like they know how to do now. So that means you can get really good guest speakers again and not have to pay them a fortune. Like David Levy costs a lot of money to bring. We can now do that stuff. Like NASA supplies speakers for free. You have to get them here, but they don't charge. So if we could Zoom meet some of those folks, then that'd be great. So and so hopefully by then I'll have a big, big screen TV set up in the classroom. And that's the only other problem is the classroom might not be big enough to do it. We'll probably have to rent the other facility because the classroom really only holds like 16. And if we have 40, 50, 60, People there because of right. big guest speakers. You know, yeah. why, why that? There is, but it's kind of icky. That might be a major issue. Yeah. But we'd we, we test it first. And maybe by then they'll have better Wi Fi there. So. Uh, so, but yeah, for the time being, we're going to keep it small and simple in this year. Just make it a good one, and we'll get good publicity for next year. So, can I approach the Zoom people? Hey, Rolando, are you there yet? He's muted. Okay. Yes, I am. Okay, good. Zoom folks, um, starting with the next meeting, I'm going to bring a speaker and a decent microphone so that we can hear you in this room, and so that when we talk, there'll be a nice, good sized microphone right here. So you can hear what people are saying and there'll be a speaker here so we can hear you. So um, we didn't do it this time. I didn't know how many people were going to be on Zoom. And with this many of you, we really needed to take care of that. So I didn't want you to get overly frustrated about the way it's working tonight. Think of, think of this as the first test run of a hybrid format. Just to... I'm not having problems hearing anybody. So I don't know if a speaker is needed. I don't know about the other two. Is it, is it the sound system that's not? No, well, we're, not. Right, right now, you people on Zoom, we're only hearing you through the microphone on my laptop. Which got, okay. You've got that microphone on your desk. I don't think that works. It's, it's not hooked up to the laptop. I, I don't even know. I've never tried to. But if it were plugged into the sound system, you could put the microphone on the computer. Yeah, I'll be. It's oh, it's a it's a USB connection. Well, I would worry. Well, well, it's not going to do anything. All you're going to do is get feedback. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why you want to hook it up. And I hook up a, my speaker to my laptop and put it here, and then the microphone into my laptop or into Robert's. So somebody's going to have to help me because I can't see the port to put it back in. I can't. I can't lift this up. I see the port. Which way does it go in? There you, you do it. I got to get the power. I can oh, see it here. Come up from the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the cables are off. What's next? All right. Thank you. The middle, there's three boat docks. So you get a break on the west, and then you center it in on the dam and the beach. And so you hear some of you hear something. When you go to the launch, you get a park on the top of the hill. And it's great. We got a segment on Lake Coming up. There's the same thing at the dam. It's above the dam 
to the south and the southwest. There's a very large part of the country. That sounds like maybe a good uh Where are we talking? Where's that? Lost Grove Lake. Oh, yeah. There's Which two, there's two two parking lots, one in the middle boat dock, one on the east at the dam uh -huh. that are good and are way up high. Since that's a fishing site, I think it's open 24 hours. It's people fish. Uh, I don't think it's open 24 hours. Park may close. That is it. It's a county park, so they're gonna shut the parks down at a certain hour. Yeah, usually it's 10 30. Yeah. Well, we can ask half hour after sunset. Sometimes. Last time I tried to get something at a county park, they wanted us to have police there and a cleanup crew and a deposit. Yeah. It wasn't that place, but it was out of where the soccer fields are at. Oh, yeah. You know, that's different. Yeah. So, they, they want us to have a. a, a, a so that's that's on, city. That's down four four miles east of Elmer. Yeah, that's Davenport Park. Okay. Well, maybe Scott County wouldn't care so much. I um, took it. Yes. I took and already checked that out. First of all, I went to Scott County Park. That's a disaster trying to line up something there. So that's totally out. You got to go through a whole bunch of rigmarole to get that scheduled. And then if it's bad weather, you went to all that work to schedule a certain date. And they told me you should go to Lost Grove Lake, which I've been out there with my wife uh, as late as probably 11, 12 o'clock at that parking lot and got a great view of the horizon. If you get there around dusk, there's fishing guys coming out with their, um, with their boats, loading them on their trailers to leave. But uh, after that, uh, it, it's been a great place. Nobody's ever approached us or anything. And Scott County Park said that that's where, if you want to do that type of thing, is go out at Lost Grove Lake and you shouldn't have any problems. That's that's what I've heard. Was that the uh, southwest or west parking lot? Or? Um, I think it's kind of in the middle. Uh, it, it's the biggest cement parking lot. You, it's definitely not the west one. You go a little farther and you turn left. There's a yellow. Are you talking about the one by the dam? Um, yes. I guess. That'd be southeast. And then, and then there's another parking lot that's a one mile west of the dam. Yeah, that's the one I always go to. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've never been approached by anybody, and it's a great view of the horizon. Yeah, you got some light pollution, but where do you go that you don't have light pollution in this area? You go all the way out Utica Ridge, and I think it might be 220th <clears throat> Avenue. You go east and uh. It's out that direction. I think it's definitely worth a shot. And that time of year, it's still cold out. So chances are no one will be around anyway. Fishermen might, but I don't think late at night they'd be out there when it's that cold. Early April. Oh, next year? Yeah. I like that Lost Grove Lake. It, it's a nice place. Uh, uh, some people don't like setting equipment up on, uh, you know, uh, asphalt or concrete parking lot in case you drop stuff, but you just put pads down or something. And uh, it, it's a big, big parking lot, too. And after the fishermen leave, um, you know, you pretty much got it to yourself. Parking lot west of your travel. Sounds a little worth a hand too, yeah. Yeah, the furthest one. Uh, but you can get to the middle one. Yeah, the middle one's one after my pavement. You can come off the road. There's a little housing development you go through. And you come up. Further, the road used to go under the lake. <laughs> but the, but the, now the road is a boat ramp. But the east one would be at the dam. It says it's open 24 hours a day online here. That's what I figured because it's a fishing site. And yeah, the parking lot is huge. If you look on Google Maps, it is a big parking lot for sure. 
plus it wouldn't be as far to go for people, you know? Um, so, and it'd be a different site once, you know, I mean, I, I think it's a great place. So, yeah, so it sounds worth, worth looking into. All right. And that's by the uh, dam, right? What's that by the dam? That parking yeah. lot you're talking about, the boat ramp by the dam. Uh, looking at Google Maps, I don't see a dam. It, like it's it's on the east side of the lake, or the I, excuse me, the parking lot is on the south side of the lake. Up towards the east end. Yes. Yeah, that's the dam. Okay. Because the other road that you can go to towards the west is gravel and boy you gotta watch the optics with gravel dust one parking lot is gravel another parking lot is paved got it okay I'm sorry but we do need to move, we do need to move on here what what the fudge <laughs> we've got other agenda items <laughs> anybody bought any new gear recently I'm guessing Jeff has bought something. Okay. You all came in and saw it, but the Zoom people maybe not. Go for it, Jeff. Okay. So um, I sent emails out. I bought a Stellina. Stellina is that rectangular little box you set on the ground and you log in with your cell phone and you press a button and it aligns itself and plate solves and does everything. And it was like four grand and it was a piece of junk. So they had a 30 day trial on it. And I sent it back with the fine print, you have to pay shipping back. So it cost me $250 to try the thing. So I sent that back and I sold the 102 carbon fiber triplet I got from Rusty to a guy on cloudy nights. And Rolando, who's right there, bought my other one, my 60 millimeter lot that I love. And I went ahead and bought this 100 millimeter lunt, but it's a day night scope. So uh, I don't drop it. You unscrew this three little thumb screws, you pull off the Edelon and the focuser. And you put on the nighttime focuser. So it's a F7 uh, FPL 53 triplet. So it's a great scope with a feather touch focuser on it for nighttime or with a V1800 blocking filter for solar with a feather touch focuser. And uh, I got to use it for 10 minutes so far since I've had it. So anyway, uh, along with this, I uh, also bought another little ASI camera. I bought their uh, 174 millimeter, uh, 174 monochrome, uh, the uncooled one. And I was gonna use that for solar and lunar work on the soap. And, That'd be fun. So and that just came in today, but I didn't want to bring it. It's, it's a little brown red thing. Anyway, any questions on the little guy? Any other new gear? And they look to sell some new, sell some gear. Anybody looking for a mount? Mount? Uh, that one I have for sale is uh, an Ioptron, or excuse me, yeah, an Ioptron uh, CEM 40. Ioptron CM 40. CEM, yes. CEM 40. How much weight will it support? What's that? How much weight? How much weight will it support? Forty pounds. What's the other CEM that you have? Sixty. What's that? The other CEM that you have. What is it? It's a sixty. And then I also have that smaller one. That's a thirty. It's the. Uh, but that's a G. That's a GEM, right? Correct. Yeah. They're really nice mounts. I mean, 
for the price you get a lot of stuff, but if you're not looking for something that bigger, or if you're going to do photography with that, and probably put it in the too heavy there, but probably have to put something like 20 to 25 pounds of equipment. So I've been able to put the, uh, on the, on the SIM 40, I've been able to put my uh, nine and a quarter edge on it. No problem. What? Does it have built-in Wi-Fi, doesn't it? Just one it. it do, that does not have built-in Wi-Fi, but I got a GPS. Uh, That's my power. It. Okay. But it's got the built-in uh, iPolar on it where you line it up and you, you oh, got yeah, a plus. Yeah, that, okay. That's not too bad. Anyone else? What of this bit? I'm going to sell my stuff. I, uh, I'm going to try to sell a Canon uh, D40 um, DSLR camera. It's uh, only got 250 snaps on it. It's like great condition. Just want to sell the body. Uh, the manuals are there, an extra uh, battery, the charger um for 185 if you know anybody that's interested i'm sure it could probably be converted to a hydrogen filter bin it too but uh i'm looking to move that on else Any, anyone else The next item on the agenda is the presentation. <coughs> Last time I announced them in advance. All right. So, pardon me, gentlemen, but I need this around here so I can make this work. All right. Find it. Of it. All right. One moment. And come on. Can everyone at home see? Can everyone online see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. So. You want to get the one light by your elbow too? How's that? That's good. All right. Bobby, you can't bring it up. He's got it memorized. Yeah. You can turn on the, the light switch closest to us. That's just the one light. I can read it all right. I can read it fine. So. <laughs> Talking about, about telescopes in this club, but I doubt we'll ever have anything the likes of this. Certainly, certainly not be able to send it a million miles from Earth. But yes, and when I say a long road, it really has been a long time in uh, development before it was finally launched. And if wondering where James, the name James Webb came from. He was the second administrator of NASA, uh, 1961 to 1968, during the height of the, well, he was administrator through the Mercury, Gemini, and the beginnings of the Apollo program. During a time when basically the whole, basically the whole of NASA was focused on sending a person to the moon, 
And, but even though that was the top priority of NASA at the time, Webb insisted on having a balance of, uh, in, of NASA's attention between crewed space flight and science. And in fact, uh, it was during an oral history project that he recalled the conversations he had with President Kennedy and Vice President Lyndon Johnson. He was quote, quoted as saying in one transcript, and so far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to run a program that's just a one-shot program. If you want me to be the administrator, it's going to be a balanced program that does the job for the country. And he did a heck of a lot to promote science, to promote like robotic, ex robotic exploration as well as uh, manned exploration. It was during his tenure that NASA sent the first space probes to Venus and Mars. And he created the NASA University program, which still provides grants for space research. So he was a big, big, big influence at NASA. And he was one of the first people to propose the development of a so-called large space telescope. Let's see. Ah. In fact, the Space Telescope Science Institute had a workshop in September 1989 to discuss, quote, the, the next major mission beyond Hubble. And this was even before the Hubble Space Telescope was launched. And this was the uh, workshop where they started much of the discussion about that. <coughs> but, uh, it's called the next generation, a 10 meter class ultraviolet visible infrared successor to HST. That's what they were talking about. Yes, a 10 meter telescope to be the serious successor to let's see what was Hubble, uh, 2.4 meter telescope. And indeed, they uh, made a proposal to the 1990 Decadal Surve Survey to recommend the development of, uh, well, by the time they made the, uh, develop the recommendation, it was kind of a six-year uh, telescope, budgetary reasons, I suppose. But uh, yeah, the Decadal Survey is this major meeting among NASA and other space agencies to basically lay the groundwork for the space explorations for the next decade and beyond. They make all the major recommendations. I mean, they get hundreds of recommendations for space missions and science uh, programs. And they have to recommend which one, they have to decide which ones to formally recommend to NASA and other space agencies based on budget, based on the uh, potential outcomes of the science mission. And well, ultimately the 1990 decadal survey, they passed on the uh, large space telescope. Um, the recommendation was for the project to start in 1998 and ultimately to launch in 2009. And possibly the estimated cost of $2 billion was one of the factors that uh, made the uh, committee ultimately turn it down. Um, nevertheless, um, development did start. I mean, the, the uh, workshop and other workshops after that, they uh, proposed, um, well, they scaled up, they went back to, back up to eight meters by the time they decided to call it the next generation space telescope. And for one thing, you can see in these early concept designs that they didn't resemble what ultimately became the James Webb Telescope very much. It was also at this time that the ultraviolet capability of the telescope was dropped in favor of just having it uh, be sensitive to visible light and infrared light. And it had a very good, re one reason was to bring down the cost, but another one was scientific practicality. So um, you see, 
this next generation space telescope was going to be big enough and being out in space, it would be able to see farther and farther into space than any other telescope that had ever that had ever been built or conceived, even on the ground. And the thing is, if you're looking that far, you have to take the universe's expansion into account. The universal expansion is literally a stretching of space. And if you are sending a light beam through space, then if it travels a very long time, then during the course of its travels, the space that's traveling to is gonna stretch long enough that it's gonna greatly increase the wavelength of that light. That's, we call that a cosmological redshift. And the farther the source of the light coming from it, the larger the redshift, and this next generation space telescope was gonna see so far that even the ultraviolet light given off by the stars and galaxies from that far away would be stretched all the way toward the red part of the visible light and well into the infrared wavelengths conceivably. So what was the point? What would be the point of having this telescope be sensitive to ultraviolet? And um, well, other factors went into the uh, uh, basically just leaving this in just the design and development stage, uh, the 91, 92 recession. And, and by this time, Hubble had been launched and was discovered to everybody's horror that the mirror had been shaken correctly. So, and that's one of the things that we're, one of the things they had to go do, if they were going to build a next generation telescope, they would need to be, take extra, extra care to make sure that that sort of thing never happened again. And there was a change in NASA administration. You know, every time the admin, an administration changes, priorities change, things get shelved, new things come up. And so it really wasn't until 1995 that any further development of the next generation telescope started up. So, well, eventually the 2000 decadal survey did uh, formally recommend uh, development design and uh, creation of the next generation space telescope. By that time, the estimated cost had been brought down to $1 billion and According to the sources I've read, to this day, nobody's really sure how they managed to uh, estimate the cost to be that much lower than in 1990. Uh, maybe, they were, maybe given the political climate in 2000, they were worried that any estimate higher than that and it would get rejected again. And uh, So it was in 2001 that, if I remember, I think, I believe this is the final size that they eventually settled on for the telescope. Although at some point they scaled it all the way down to four meters in width and someone very big and very close to the project insisted that four meters is such a small step above Hubble's 2.4 meters that, come on guys, I mean, let's at least get a little more bang than that if we're gonna have a true successor. And it was in 2002 that the name was eventually changed to the James Webb Space Telescope. And construction then began two, two years later. And that's when the delays really started. Uh, the cost, uh, the estimated cost rose to three and a half billion dollars. Just kept getting higher and higher than that. Uh, the launch date was pushed back to 2011. Uh, the trouble, one of the big problems was James Webb was having so many new innovative technologies uh, put into its design that development of them just uh, kept pushing the timetable back and raising the cost. That's truly scope creep. Yeah. You say so. Yes, and so the day just kept putting, would push back and push back. The costs kept going up and up. And in 2011, the House of Representatives did vote to cancel the whole project. 
and it would have been the first time that they can't canceled such a project. In 1993, the superconducting super collider, which was going to be the biggest particle accelerator in the world, it was uh, canceled, again, for similar cost overruns, and delays in construction and design. Uh, I'll let you in a little secret here. I had a, uh, a research experience for undergraduates in uh, 1991 in Boulder, Colorado, doing work that was connected with the superconducting super collider, you know, designing and testing some of the particle detectors that would have gone into it. Not the first thing I would, uh, well, a little bit reluctant to put that on my resume after it was canceled, but. Well. And yeah, when you're talking about the big cost here, since 2000, from, from 2003 onwards, fully a third of NASA's dollars that were going toward astro anything related to astrophysics were going toward the James Webb Telescope. And as a result, a lot of other projects got crowded out of the budget and out of the planning. That's one reason why the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, which in fact was one of the top recommendations of the 2010 Decadal Survey, got delayed so far that now it's going to be at least 2027 before it finally launches. And it actually took some strong campaigning on the part of people connected with the project and even the general public before the House relented and allowed the James Webb to go back onto the, uh, onto the uh, schedule with the new estimated cost of $8.8 .8 billion and a new launch date in 2018. Proponents pointed out that the Hubble Space Telescope went through similar delays and cost overruns, and look how much that eventually did for science once it was launched, and once its optics were fixed. But yes, I mean, we have, Hubble has shown us more and taught us more about the universe since its launch than in the 400 years plus earlier. So proponents of James Webb are saying the same thing is going to happen with that. Okay, so that brings us to an estimated launch date of 2018. More delays happened. Um, I, I, if I remember reading, there was an accidental tearing in the sun shield, which caused yet more delays. And then 2020, I guess you can probably all guess what kind of what cause delays then, but finally, Christmas Day 2021, great big Christmas present for the entire astronomical community, it finally launched. That's right. Uh, we have, they have made an agreement with European Space Agency. They would provide the Ariane 5 rocket to launch it and the facility there to launch it from in exchange for a guaranteed share of observing time on it for European astronomers and a splitting of the cost. I should point out, yeah, well, that uh, eight point that, that, that $8.8 .8 billion, that was just NASA's contribution to cost. Europe... European Space Agency, they contributed quite a few euros to it themselves. And here you can see why it took so long to, one, one reason why it took so long to develop the necessary technology. I mean, look how much they had to fold it up in order to fit it into the rocket. And since this is going to like, almost a million miles away from Earth, there'd be no chance of any kind of, sur of servicing mission if anything goes wrong here. So every component on that, including the components that unfolded out, had to work exactly right the very first time. But they had to test it, retest, and re-re-retest it hundreds of times before they finally convinced that it was going to work. <laughs> we can send a test file. I don't think even the Maytag repairman could make it out of the L2 point. 
um, it was discovered by a, Fra a French mathematician named Lagrange that there are, if you combine the gravity of the sun and a large planet like Earth, even better if it's a larger planet, there are five points relative to the orbit of that planet where the gravitational force is balanced in such a way that you can put a small object like an asteroid or a space probe like this, and it'll just hang there more or less permanently. And James Webb was sent to the second of those gravitational sweet spots, a location 930,000 miles beyond Earth, directly opposite from the sun. Have they foreseen any issues with the Lagrange points tend to collect a lot of garbage? Actually, L2 already has uh, quite a few stuff that we've already sent up there. Yeah, I just wonder, you know, that there's like a lot of small asteroids and, and stuff like that that collects it also. That, Have that is. Have any issues with that? Or? Well, I imagine they scanned that spot very thoroughly to make sure that there wasn't anything in there right now. And, actually, and to be honest, the L2 point is actually one of the less stable ones. And like if you put, if an asteroid would happen to fall into that spot, it actually wouldn't stay there very long. Yeah. Now, I if it's, sorry. Notice the telescope actually orbits around L2. Yes. Yeah. So, does, so does anything else there. The same thing would happen if we send it to L1. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. But yeah, we're talking about asteroids. Points L4 and L5, they are the most stable ones. And so like in the case of Jupiter, that's where all the Trojan asteroids are and they'll pretty much stay there forever and ever. Actually, Earth has uh, one or two Trojan asteroids. I've got one of those spots or the other. Very tiny ones, of course, but they are there. Yeah, but yeah. But anyway, one, one of the main reasons that they had to send L2 out there is because they had, had to send James Webb out there is because since it's designed to scan the universe in infrared, its instruments have to be extremely cold. So you have to get at least that far away from Earth just so that Earth's own infrared radiation doesn't interfere with the instruments. And having at this point where the Earth is at least partially blocking the sun makes it that much, that much better. And it's also the reason why James Webb has that giant sun shield there. Yeah, not only did the scopes, mirrors, primary and secondary mirrors have to unfold perfectly once they were launched, so did the sun shield. It's a five layer deep shield, which pretty much, once it's fully deployed, the instruments on the main mirror would be able to cool all the way down to like no more than a few tens of kelvins above absolute zero. Like what was it? To... I read that one of them, at least one instrument's already down to just a couple of degrees above absolute zero already. Yes, yes, the uh, 6.5 degrees Kelvin. 6.5 degrees Kelvin, yes. And then they're going to cool. They have to actually have coolers to cool them even further. Mm. I believe that's what. Me. What is that? Blue fuel four hundred four hundred degrees Fahrenheit or something. Well, I know what it is in Celsius. It's my minus two hundred seventy three point one five degrees Celsius. Somewhere around four fifty below. More or less, yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, so, yes, the, so the main mirror is 6.5 meters compared to two point, almost 2.4 meter. And that mirror is constructed of a beryllium alloy, which is not only makes it not only very lightweight and strong, very lightweight, but a very strong metal. And the gold, the gold plating is not only to protect the main mirror, but gold happens to be a very good reflector of red and infrared light. 
And so, let's see. So they managed to get the sun shield fully deployed 10 days after launch. The mirrors themselves were fully de deployed by about a month after launch, after which they started a lengthy alignment of the mirrors. So you know that main mirror, there is an 18 segments. So they all have to be very finely adjusted relative to each other before it would finally give the uh, sharpest possible images. And in the back there, see that the integrated science instrument module, that is the main scientific package that processes the infrared and mid-infrared images. So let's see, the four main instruments are the near-infrared camera, the near-infrared spectrograph, the mid-infrared instrument, that's the instrument that has to be the coldest. Yeah, no more than 6.5 kelvins. And then there's the near infrared imager and slitless spectrograph, AKA the fine guidance sensor. And James Wett also comes with coronagraphs, which if they're aligned just right, they're able to mask the light from very distant stars in such a way that it allows planets orbiting those stars to be directly imaged uh, like uh, what was done here, this is planetary system HR8799. This was imaged from, uh, from uh, Earth, from the Keck Observatory, using a similar coronagraph. And you can see there are four, you detected four planets orbiting it, each of them at least five times the mass of Jupiter with orbital periods ranging from, I think, 50 years up to somewhere around Very five years. years. So yeah, even with a coronagraph, the planet has to be pretty large and orbit the star pretty distantly in order to be able to directly image it. But I mean, otherwise, if directly imaging planets is so rare with the technology that we have available right now that any extra ability to do that is, is great. So are the coronagraphs adjustable for different I haven't been able to find much information about them yet. Um, I understand that three different, three of those different instruments in the package there have their own spectrum, have their own coronagraphs. Um, it's possible they may need uh, different ones for the different wavelengths that they're going to be observing at. I, I, I don't really know for sure. I have another question before we move further down. Did I did I hear or read somewhere that they were the, the mirrors were designed so that they were dependent on the temperature in order to realize their final adjustment? Like the geometry was designed that when they got to a certain temperature, they they perfectly form out the, the, the correct surface or or not. That the alignment of the mirrors depends on their temperature. That, that they were counting on that temperature in order for the mirror to get to the final. It, it the wouldn't final, uh, adjustment or, or it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, the I mean the shape, the size and shape of metals. I mean they do change with temperature. I mean right. that like. Uh, Thermal expansion or thermal contraction. So they are adjustable, but they also needed the mirrors to actually reach a certain temperature so they have the right shape and that they match with each other so, correctly. So it makes sense that they wouldn't be able to do the final alignment until the mirrors had reached their operating temperature. Right. Yeah, that, made, that makes sense. Infrared is not as critical because the wavelengths don't get but, but on the other hand, because the wavelength's longer, that means you get less resolution for the same size of mirror. So yeah, that that's a that's a factor. That's another factor. All right. So well. James Webb has reached the L2 point, so it is now in its, uh, in its operating position. 
So, and they are expecting the uh, all the alignments and adjustments to be finished uh, like within the next couple of months or so. And once it actually gets started, they've already uh, they got four main goals for the James James for science for the James Webb Telescope. One of the big ones is to search for the first objects that formed after the Big Bang to determine how galaxies formed and evolved, to observe stars and planetary systems as they are forming, and to study fully formed planetary systems and search for signs of life. For a little more detail on the first goal, the first objects formed after the, bird, the, bird, after the Big Bang, in other words, the very first stars that ever formed in the universe. According to, now, when the universe was first formed, the Big Bang, the only elements that existed were hydrogen and helium. Maybe a little trace of lithium, but, that, but otherwise that's it. Which means that's what the very first stars been formed out of. And computer models tell us that stars formed out of only those two elements would have been very, very massive and therefore very, very short-lived. And being that massive, they would have produced huge quantities of heavy elements as they were fusing the hydrogen helium into, well, carbon, oxygen, silicon, iron, everything after that. And being short-lived means they would have very quickly exploded, quickly cosmically speaking, and thus very quickly enrich, enriched the surrounding universe with those heavy elements. And there are, we have made observations that suggested that the heavy element concentration of the universe may have risen very quickly, almost up to present day values within the first couple billion years of the universe. James Webb will actually be able to image the first light from those very first stars and maybe confirm this. Or at the very least, tell us more about what, more, more details about what these very first stars were like and how they gave birth to the next generations of stars. So the question here is, do they know where these stars are, or are they just looking to see if in any of the images that they do, some of this light shows up? The very first stars, they should be visible in any direction. The trick is that only James yeah, Webb- but didn't you say that we're too big to, to be sustainable so they, actually exploded. So are we looking for what, for the remnants? No, no, they, they, they had very short, like maybe they lived for no more than a couple million years or so before exploding. Right. Right. So. But they were there. The light still traveling? Yes. Oh, and yeah. There is no, and there, and after the explosion, well, we we'll, don't see that, or we would see that eventually. We'll be able to see, well, we'll see, we'll be able to, potentially see these stars when they were alive, as well as when they exploded. The key here is that only James Webb is powerful enough to be able to see that far back, back in time to see those very first stars. Not, see, not even Hubble is powerful enough to see, that, to see them from that far, to see that far back. Remember that the far the farther you're looking out in space, the farther back in time you're looking because I, of that. I, I realize, but I, but the light is traveling, so it's not like it's static, right? So yeah. at some point in time it would reach us, right? Yes. It might not be now. It might be millions of years into the future, but it will eventually reach. If us. they're at the right distance from us, then the light is reaching us now. But if they're not at the right distance, will it would that light eventually dissipate? Well, it went on for a few million years, so as long as we get back to that window of time, yeah, we should be seeing them everywhere. Yes, yeah, exactly. Well, f figure it if they say that these stars formed 13.5 billion years ago. Now, if these same stars are 13.5 billion light years from us, then the light from those first stars is reaching us now. And then a million years in our future, the light from them exploding will reach us. And then again, say that those stars that are just exploding are exploding 13.5 billion years ago. 
If they are 13.5 billion light years from us, then their explosions are reaching us now. We're, we're seeing the light from stars from different points in the universe's history, depending on how far those objects happen to be from us. So along with that, I don't know if this is the question you were asking originally, but I don't want to digress or take it, but so, okay, so I got my solar scope here. If I want to look at the sun, I can kind of move my scope this much and still see the sun, right? Because it, the sun is big in the field of view. Yeah. So now, if I want to look at Jupiter, I can look at Jupiter, but I can't move my scope as much because it's smaller and it's farther out. How do we know where the first star was to aim the web app? Yeah, that was, that, that was one of my questions. So well, I think it is there any direction. But I'm thinking is that so they are, they are this way, and the I'm talking about an individual star. You mean the, yeah. very, very yeah, the very, very first, first star, star, the actual first star yeah, that it was ever born? No, but any of those. Or any, well, any they're going to be scattered all around the edge of the universe. Right. right. So look at any direction. See okay. Okay. We, 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 do, we don't. We don't know which of them was actually the first one. Well, and have to think. You don't know how many form of that big bang from the very. You know, it could have been just a hundred, and then from there, all their stuff form, right? Or it could have been millions. We don't know. Do we? Just look around and random until we find. It. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're, yeah. Just, you're just hoping that you will see that light at some point in time. The same way that you're hoping that you're going to notice that there is planets around. Stars, you don't know for sure that they're there. There's other signals that tell you that they are, hmm. right? But it does make sense that if I aim it, I'll see something, right? And I'll be able to tell how old it is. If I move over here and it's older, maybe I'm going the right direction and I move it and I keep on following the little grid. So I don't know, but I know this is pretty simplistic, but the Big Bang formed a hundred of these stars, just to use a number. And then in 13.5 billion years, they scatter out. How far apart are from each other? It's, I think it's probably more like billions of stars, trillions. We don't know. Well, it's like the entire. Well, that's one of the things we're going to find out. Tied up in those stars. We don't know because the Big Bang theory doesn't. It's a it's a theory, right? We don't know. Yeah, but. Well, it's, it's a well studied, well tested theory. But it does make sense if there's uh, a point of where it started. You mean, you mean the universe formed? Or, well, we're digressing. Let's continue. <laughs> because I was gonna, I was gonna go on a tangent. We well, we we might have a clue because uh, it's very likely that the very first stars that ever formed in the universe, they also formed the first galaxies. And here, the science is to find out how these how our present day nice orderly spiral and elliptical galaxies evolved and formed out of what were probably started out as small irregular blobs of very young, very metal Do four think, stars. I, mean, well, I, I don't know. I guess I have a different idea in my head of how galaxies would form, right? Well, that's another thing we're that trying to find out. Gas yeah, and dust that started spinning and, and, and they that's later on. Now, huh? these were formed strictly from hydrogen. The gas and stuff came later. Well, I, actually, that, that's another thing we're still trying, we're still uh, don't know everything about. See, there are two main competing theories. One is that a galaxy was formed all at once from one giant cloud of hydrogen collapsing in and itself. But the competing theory says that modern galaxies were formed by the multiple mergers of small proto galaxies. So, which one is right, or was the combination of the two? That's one of the things. That's one of the other. Another thing that James Webb is going to hopefully tell us. Oh, the fields of creation, baby. Yes. Because James Webb is primarily an infrared telescope, it'll be able to peer right through the gas and dust of those star forming regions and directly image protostars and planetary systems in the process of formation. And being such a wider scope than Hubble, it'll give us that much more detailed and image, a picture of them. And then once we're able to detect other planets, James Webb will be powerful enough to detect the atmospheres 
of many of those exoplanets, either by observing them, the light from the stars passing through the atmospheres as they're transiting, or by direct imaging. And be able to take detailed spectra of those atmospheres and maybe, just maybe, mind you, detect the right combinations of gases and chemicals in such some of these atmospheres that might be signs of life. And actually, it's not just going to focus totally on exoplanets. James Webb will also help uh, other instruments on Earth study the planets in our own solar system. Kind of a side, sort of a sidebar on that, but yeah. And this image was taken uh, just as the fine phasing alignment was completed as a test of how well the mirrors are aligned and see just how sharp that star is um, while barring the diffraction lines, of course. And look at that. In the background of the star, you can always already see some very distant, very distant galaxies in crisp, sharp focus. Do you have the original picture, Dr. Mitchell, of the 18? I saw a picture online of the original 18, and there were 18 dots of the same star. I don't have that here, unfortunately. Yes, I see. And then, it, and then after adjustments, they got to there. So they, it, it was quite a, you know, quite yes. an achievement just to get to this point. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yes, unfortunately, I didn't mean to bring that here, but yes, I know what you're talking about. It was, yes, it was a good achieve, achievement. And uh, let's see. So they've already chosen the first uh, observing programs for the telescope and cycle and observing cycle one is going to commence six months after launch. So, so hopefully this June. And they're already entertaining rounds for, for, for observing, or take proposals for observing cycle two. So yes, James Webb is just about ready to start business, business in earnest. And unfortunately, beyond that, we'll just have to wait and see. Is that your last slide? That's the last one, yes. One interesting thing about this image is how amazing it is. Down somewhere in here, it doesn't show at this resolution, but they did some enhancement on this image and they found a ring which they've decided is an actual accretion disk around a black hole. The first, first image they took, they found a black hole <laughs> directly imaged. It's, it's over in here somewhere. You have to like stretch the, the, the brightness of the image to get it to pull out. It's pretty cool. And if I read correctly, the Flight path was so good that they actually saved fuel getting to L2. And they think that they have enough fuel for the telescope for longer than they had expected. Ooh, number so. of years, operational so, yeah. years. I tell you, there were all there was a lot of nail biting right up to the launch date and beyond that. I mean, after all the time and money that it's spent on this. So hoping that everything would run smoothly after that. One of the one of the PAC members, Katie Melbourne, she actually worked on that scope and she was one of the crew that was aligning the mirrors. Nice. Yeah, she's in Colorado where they and she was actually there when they launched. She went to over to Europe when they launched it. She was there. Did she do a presentation in one of your meetings? Yeah, I think I, I saw that. Yes. And guess why they're already talking about plans for a successor to this one. Probably won't launch until the 2040s, they think. But, uh, well, you know, de development of scopes of 
space missions on this scale, they take they can take decades. So the, I'm hoping not to be spent like forty credits. <laughs> oh no, I'm 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 hoping to. I don't, I, I don't know if I could get out of my chair, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> but I can I can probably see. But sure. I, as, long, as long as long as your eyes and your mind still work, yeah. and you can pick up. Well, Sam's already lost part of that. <laughs> so, Dr. Mitchell, on on, on the first uh, stars that form, mm -hmm. be, because they were so massive, you know, they burn so quickly. Yes. I mean, is it a matter of you know, hundred thousand years that they would be be a life expectancy for those early ones, or even less? Maybe some computer models predicted they might be up to a thousand times the mass of our sun. That would be a pretty short lifetime indeed. Well, the, the, well, the, re the reason they have to be that massive is that it turns out if it's made of just pure hydrogen helium, then it's very good at losing heat. So the only, so the only other way to keep the core hot enough for fusion to happen is if you have a tremendous amount of mass crushing that core down to keep it that hot. So. And that's, that's the main reason why we have never detected any such stars in our more immediate neighborhood. And they just, they just do not make it to that high mass anymore. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Stop saving it. Where is it? Uh, I can talk. There you are. Yes. Okay. I got it. Got it. And I've overloaded the camera. Okay. Well, moving on here. A little bit of time left. Uh, treasures report. Oh. Oop. I don't think anything has changed because the last. Uh, hang on a minute. You've got the mid check. Yeah, I think. Well, I guess. Okay, there we go. The last time I reported, I already had that number included. But probably didn't because it was March 29th, so we wouldn't have had a meeting then. Okay, so. Uh, general fund right now stands at 21.15.39. Then event funds, they have changed 327.30. Servitory relocation is uh, 45.47. That does include the grant, that thousand dollar grant. What was the 45.47? 45.47. 40,547 and 78 cents. That's the observatory relocation. And that's for a total of 42,990.47. Discussion? We have a motion to accept the treasurer's report. Move to assume. Ron Mullen moves. Dan and Taylor seconds. In favor, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Report is accepted. <laughs> Any updates to the observatory relocation? Yes. Hi, <coughs> Dana. Dana, what do you got? About a year ago. I bought a 50 watt laser. 50 watts? Yeah. You don't see control laser. I can engrave wood, 
class. And mirrors. Donating this to the observatory. So that people online. Cool. What if we turn off the light here on the end? How's that? There we go. That's nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if I can find the correct remote for it, you can change colors too and everything. The problem I just, is though, Dana, it's, the lettering is backwards. You're good. Thank you. Awesome. That is incredible. Thank you. Nice. USB port to the Cool. More observatory relocation stuff. Yes. Um, I went out to Wilt Observatory with Craig Saturday afternoon and installed another camera and we recollimated the scope. And the weather was supposed to be clear enough, so we went back out that night, we got there about 7 p.m. and we stayed till about 2.30 in the morning, trying to do polar alignment and alignment using the routines that they had. So we worked on that and we almost got it where we wanted it. But the point being for the observatory relocation, Mid-American did send us a check for $1,000 for so we doing that project. As soon as I'm done, which is only one more outing there, Wilton will be sending us another thousand. And I've got enough hours built up this year that Mid American should give us another $500 for doing it. But what I'm asking for anybody here, because the more hours I spend out there between now and my retirement on May 2nd, is the more money I get from Mid American. So I would love to have any of you, I only am working out five more days between now and then. Anybody that wants to go out during the week or during the weekend, daytime, nighttime, check out the facility, I'll chalk it up as training. And I can put that toward our hours. So it's like 45 minutes to drive out there, 45 minutes back. So if you just go out there for a half an hour, an hour, that's like three hours, that's like another 30 bucks donated. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but if I do it 10 or 12 times, all of a sudden we're talking about three, four, five hundred dollars So right now they owe me a, 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 almost $500 for what I've got built up this year so far. So if anybody wants to go, let me know. I work Tuesday and Wednesday this week. I'm off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So next week I work Thursday, Friday, so. Let me know if you just want to go out. You can check out the classroom. I can show you how we remote, remote into it. We can go out to the observing, showing you how it works in there. Um, you can actually train on the thing so that, because uh, they're going to, I'll be running it in the future. And for me doing that, they're going to pay me every time I have to do something for them. I'm having them donate that to the club. So if I'm not available, it'd be great if some other club member could do it. Like they might say, hey, there's a, uh, a, a lunar transit uh, uh, with a Saturn coming up. Can you image it? Or another Venus transit or a lunar eclipse or whatever. Can you use our gear and image it so the students can see it the next day? So there'll be remote access. You don't have to go out there. You can log in from home, open the roof, raise the pier, aim the scope, do the imaging, lock it all up. You don't have to leave your room. So uh, anyway, if you want to go out there between now and May 2nd, the club will get money for doing it. So. You send an, e an email out of the club. I will do that, please. So yeah, I got some free time. And it's certainly a good idea if 
other people besides Jeff knew how to operate the knew how to operate the equipment there. Anything else on the observatory? Well, my son and I went out, oh, it's been a few weeks ago, went out and uh, welded a bunch of reinforcement rod from those that square tubing on the base of the 20 inch. So that should uh, hopefully a lot of stables and stuff again. Sounds good. Any other good? Any others? Anything else? Is there any, any other business that you want to bring up? Um, yeah, uh, we got an email today for uh, Terry Dufek, which uh, is a PAC member, recent one, but he's a long time PAC member, a recent QCS member. Uh, they've got a lunching for him. Uh, he passed away. Couple weeks ago, and there's a luncheon on June 3rd. And there's a second hit by slider. How many of you know Terry? Great guy. I mean, he knew a ton of stuff, but he acted like, you know, he's always learning. So uh, you can learn from him, and, and he liked to learn. So uh, if anybody's interested in going, I'm planning on going the hour with Bernard SVP. If you didn't see the email or didn't get it, want information on it, you can email me or the group. I that out too. I, I think you were on that email as well. I, I did get it. Yes. That's early June, they said. Yeah, June 3rd. June 3rd. I think it was like, that's like a Friday, I think, and I think it starts like 11 ish or something. Riverfront. Riverfront. Riverfront Inn. Yeah. Riverfront Grill. Rock Island. Yeah. Where the pack had the actual bank. And that's the same place as same place. place. I was wondering, yeah. Okay, so and, and if anyone didn't get that email, please let us know. We'll forward it to you. I, I didn't know that about it. Just where did they send it? Is it to our club or did they send it to I it it, it came from Pam Collar, K O L L N R, Terry's sister. Yeah. And it looks like it went to maybe PAC members looking at this. I think she sent it to Al and Al sent it out. Okay. So I think it, it didn't get it to the whole club. I think he sent it to like you and Jeff. Well, we belong. Like, I think he yeah. sent it to PAC members. I'm a PAC member. Yeah. You're a PAC member. No, I'm not. No. You might have added you for QCS, but yeah. Well, we can pour it out because. He was a member here and most everybody knows him. I mean, even yes. if he's not a member here, everybody knows him. So yeah. So if I don't forward it, Jeff will. All right. Um, any other business? Anybody want to start the tradition up of going to Village after our meetings again? I can use it this time. <laughs> For a little while. Well, we're bringing that up. Then first, let me point our next board meeting is May 4th, and our next, next regular meeting is May 16th. And if anybody has an idea for a presentation for that meeting, please let us let us on board know. Please let us know. If you know if you know someone who would be willing to give a presentation to the meeting, please let us know. Is there anything else? I hear you. I hear a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. We move the meetings to Wednesday so we can free pie and <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you know you have to buy a meal now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no. which is okay by me. I eat twenty four by seven, but yeah. Oh, not we put our board meetings back on Wednesday. So All right. Oh, you did. Uh, those those of you are on online. Thank you for putting up with the primitive equipment for the online. We will uh, we'll try to do better ne better next month. You All did right. fine. You did great. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Have a good night, guys. You too. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Good to see you. Oh. I wonder if the wind dies down or if it's still the same. So I think the weather said it was supposed to die down around midnight. Mike is. Is there something else, Mike? Or? No, I'm trying to see here where to uh, shut off here. Uh, lower, lower right, I think. Lower right of the screen. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, oh, here it is. There we go. Okay. All right. Good night. I'd want to look at it because I would like to see more of a steel.